We're talking about food again. The conversation around meat, vegetarianism, and veganism is a really interesting one at both a population level and a personal level. People have all kinds of reasons for choosing to eat or not eat meat. They could be environmental, moral, religious, access, availability, preference. There isn't gonna be one dietary solution that is right for everyone in every situation. But today, in collaboration with Merck KGAA Darmstadt, Germany, I wanna talk about a new type of meat that could impact this conversation a little bit. It's not gonna solve all these problems, but it might play a factor in what you're choosing to eat in the future. Cell cultured meat. So what is cell cultured meat? When you eat a piece of steak or a chicken thigh, what you're actually eating is a muscle composed of many different cells. So some companies have started to create animal-free meat where they take a biopsy from an animal, say a cow, they extract stem cells from that biopsy, and then they grow them artificially in the lab, making lots and lots of those cells. Theoretically, you could grow lots of these meat cells without having to actually kill a single animal. An example in Scientific American said that one tissue sample could potentially make enough cells for 80,000 quarter pounders. It's a lot of burgers with no cows. One cow. There's some potential positives to creating meat this way. Since you're not killing any animals, it could be a more humane way to produce meat. Some proponents also suggest that because raising animals is often done unsustainably, this could be another way to create more sustainable meat. We'll get back to that in a second. Other arguments in favor of cell cultured meat include that growing cells in a lab could reduce the spread of zoonotic diseases from traditionally raised livestock, while also cutting back on antibiotic use in meat production. Overusing antibiotics in meat production can lead to antibiotic resistant bacteria, which is not great for anyone. Merck KGAA Darmstadt, Germany put together a trend study on cultured meat products. And there are some interesting insights in there that I think help to contextualize why there's growing interest in this as a product. They point out, for example, that there's been a big rise in global meat production since the mid 20th century. And that meat consumption is growing in some markets like India and China, while its popularity is starting to wane in some Western countries due to concerns about climate change, ethical meat production, and its effects on your health. So it's possible that cultured meat could be a way to produce more meat for those growing markets, while also producing meat that doesn't have some of those ethics or sustainability issues for the markets where its popularity is falling a little bit. But that doesn't mean that everyone's gonna jump at the chance for a lab-grown burger. 66% of the scientists surveyed in the study were open to trying lab-grown meat, but surveys of highly educated but non-scientist populations showed slightly lower numbers. The scientists might have to be the burger trendsetters here if this is gonna take off. And there are some other big hurdles that cell cultured meat is gonna have to overcome if it has any chance of making it in the market. First is the price. A recent techno-economic analysis, I also didn't know that that was a thing, but it is, published in 2021, looked at the price of producing a pound of cell cultured meat. Looking at data from 15 different companies, the production price today for a pound of cell cultured meat is about $10,000. That is a very expensive steak. But their analysis laid out a number of steps that could bring that price down to about $6.50 a pound over the next nine years. Now, there have been big critiques of this study, and I'll put those citations down here, that think that that sort of eventual price might be closer to something like $20 a pound. That's probably too high for a casually interested grocery shopper. There's only one cell cultured meat product currently on the market. It is a cell cultured chicken product by a company called Eat Just that's been approved to sell in Singapore. It's appeared in a few different formats, but at one time it was available in a meal-sized portion for $23. But according to a Guardian article, that was selling for less than the production cost. So they were actually losing money on the chicken that they sold. And there's another new product that's aiming to be on the market really soon called Wild Type. And this is a cell cultured salmon startup that's out in San Francisco. And they've been doing limited samplings for a while. I'll admit I've been on the wait list for months, but it's not clear yet what that product will cost when it hits the market. However, with all that said, I don't think that cost alone is a deal breaker for cell cultured meats. Lots of products start off really expensive and then come down in price over time. And I think there's also a possibility that this could be a kind of luxury food product. I think there are a lot of foods out there that people are willing to pay really high prices for if they're interested in them and if they taste good. Another big hurdle is that cell cultured meat has been promised to be a potentially more sustainable way to grow food. Can't have cow farts if you're not raising cows. 
as well as all of the other unsustainable issues that come with our current food production system. Livestock agriculture is responsible for 14.5% of all human-caused global greenhouse gas emissions. I've mentioned in a prior video that the most efficient dietary use of land is actually in support of ovo-lacto-vegetarian diets. And so growing lots and lots of cows for meat isn't really the best option for our planet. But honestly, being an ovo-lacto-vegetarian or normal vegetarian or vegan is not always accessible to people. It can be expensive and inconvenient, frankly. And also preference plays a role here. Not everyone wants to be a vegetarian or a vegan. So finding potentially sustainable ways to create meat could be a way for people who are interested in the environmental impacts, but just can't give up their steak to participate in that. Cultured meat products will take up less land and water to produce than traditional agriculture, which is an environmental win but growing cells in the lab is energy intensive. This means the overall environmental impact depends a lot on where that energy is coming from. If we're burning a bunch of coal to make cell cultured meats, it could be worse in terms of emissions than getting that same amount of meat from a cow. But if the energy is coming from solar or wind power, it could be better. Another thing to keep in mind is that, like a cow, the cells need to eat. They're usually grown in some kind of cell culture media that when I worked in the lab, I used to joke was basically a really fancy sports drink because in essence, it's a finely tuned mixture of salts and sugars and amino acids that the cells need to grow. And you have to make all of those salts and sugars and stuff. And so the environmental impact of where all of those components are coming from has to also be taken into account. This is a place where I really think we're dealing with parallel problems at once. Just because our power grid isn't green yet, doesn't mean we should stop innovating in areas that would do best in a more sustainably powered environment. So for now, I'll leave that problem for other people to debate. Again, citations. But there's another component of the growth media that I wanna talk about too. It's called FBS or fetal bovine serum. And it's exactly what it sounds like. It's serum, the liquid portion of blood that remains when those red blood cells and clotting factors are removed, and it comes from fetal cows. It's a component of some cell culture media because it contains things like hormones, growth factors, nutrients, and all the other stuff that cells need to grow. This is a problem for cell cultured meat for two reasons. The first is pretty obvious. If the goal is to create meat without killing animals, then feeding your cells an animal-based product is an issue. It undermines a really big goal of this new technology. The second problem is a little more technical. While there are testing and regulation and purification steps, you can imagine that there might be batch to batch variation in the FBS. Not every single cow is identical, so their serum won't be identical. It can vary based on the mother's diet, whether or not antibiotics were used, the age of the fetus, etc. There have been lots of conversations in science broadly about whether or not all cell culture media should move away from FBS because the changes in the components from batch to batch could affect scientific reproducibility in experiments. But this is a hurdle that the companies are clearing. In 2019, Mosa Meat announced that they'd created a new FBS-free cell culture media that they could use to grow their meat. Ala Farms and their protein supplier Wacker have also done the same. Other companies are trying things like algae and fermentation to create all of those components needed for growth without using FBS. Merck KGAA Darmstadt Germany is also working on an FBS-free product, and they note that this isn't just an ethical decision, it's also a cost one. FBS is expensive, so if companies can use something else to grow their cells, it'll help to drive the overall cost down. I'm actually pretty hopeful that even though these new technologies are being developed for cell cultured meat, they might be able to be transferred to the lab to make other cell culture experiments more reproducible too. So I think this is an absolutely fascinating topic. And one of the things I really like about it is that it spurs discussion around food and the science of food and where our food comes from. Do I think that in 10 years, we'll have stopped eating animal derived meat and be munching solely on lab grown steaks? No, I don't. But I do think that these cell cultured meats will likely have some amount of market space for people who want to eat meat while reducing their environmental impact or while reducing the number of animals killed. I think this is pretty similar to how plant-based meat substitutes are becoming more and more popular now. This video is real long, I have so many thoughts, so I'm gonna put some additional resources if you wanna dig into this a bit more. First is an interview with Lavanya Anandan. She used to be the head of innovation in cultured meat for Merck KGAA Darmstadt, Germany, and she now serves as their head of group innovation, portfolio management, and operations. She gave a really fascinating interview about cell cultured meat as a part of their sustainables initiative. She talks about the potential benefits of cultured meat and mentioned that the biggest hurdle is fear of the unknown. I love that. 
I'll link that below with the cell cultured meat trend study. And you can also view the rest of Merck KGAA Darmstadt Germany sustainables projects, including exploring their goals of creating more sustainable packaging and connecting more people to the internet at the link below. So again, I think this topic is really fascinating. I had a lot of fun reading about all the different sides of it, and I have just scratched the surface of it with this video. So I would love to hear your thoughts on what you think are the potential benefits of cell cultured meat or the biggest hurdles that these companies would have to face. And also, would you eat it? I would. I am here for it and I'm ready to try it. But would you? Go forth, do science, and ask where your next snack came from.